it would only be fitting to conclude with the fact that suffering for Christ, suffering for Christ is a blessing. Did you want to conclude with any thoughts on that, Lowe's? I did read uh, an article by Eric Watkins mm. uh, on uh, Ligonier, and I have a uh, just a brief couple paragraphs I wanted to read <clears throat> and then wrap it up a little bit. He said, uh, God clearly gave Jacob a dose of his own deceptive medicine, but what Jesus experienced was undeserved. Mm. He endured trials and conflicts to be identified with us. We should learn to see our trials and conflicts in a similar light means by which we are being identified with Christ. This is one of the many blessings of being a Christian. We don't see it as a blessing at times. Yet it usually comes not apart from trials and conflicts, but through them. With these thoughts in mind and our eyes fixed on Christ, we have greater strength to endure all things, knowing that our God will not leave us until he has done all that he has promised to us. Hmm. So blessings... You know, it, the nature of blessings in the Christian life is that they look like curses to the world. Mm. Uh, but they are good because they will make us more like Christ. Jesus said, blessed are you who are poor. Second Corinthians 8, 9 says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. So that you by his poverty might become rich. Mm. You know, when yeah. he said, blessed are you who are poor, it's. And, and those of us who are poor in this world, you know, uh, according to the world standards or whatever, we're blessed mm -hmm. and we're more like Christ because of it. He also said, blessed are you who are hungry. I was reminded of Matthew 26, 29, where he says, I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. And we're, we're continually hung, hungry and in need of things like bread and think you know right now but one day you know we'll have the eternal bread we have them now we can enjoy them now but in the meantime he won't take of the vine until we see him again that's why we do communion every week at our church to remind ourselves of our hope then he says blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil well jesus was hated excluded reviled that's meant to make you more like Christ. I, want, I just want to wrap it up with 1 Peter 4.13, where he says, But rejoice in, in as far as you share in Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Those things are meant for us to be more like Christ. And so if you're out there, and I don't know your situation, I don't know what it looks like in your home or in your life, but I know this, that if you're suffering, you're going through things in your life and you're a Christian. All those things are just meant to make you more like Christ. Remember that. Keep your eyes fixed on him. That's why Jesus said in verse 23 of <coughs> Luke 6, rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the prophets. And so our reward is Christ revealed. So, amen. 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 Um. I would definitely say that suffering for Christ is a blessing, even though many people out there don't look at it that way. Um, I, I'm, I remember watching this clip on YouTube from the movie. It was a 1987 movie. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it was it was two years before it was made two years before I was actually born. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I saw the clip from the movie called The Princess Bride. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was a pretty big movie. I never watched it. I'm it was a, a pretty big movie. Thugs though. don't watch movies right. like that. It was you know a big saying? movie though. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I know thugs don't watch it. <laughs> but I was watching it on bad, a bro. clip on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't watching the movie. All there right. was a clip that that I saw on YouTube, and they show good parts of the movie. I follow this page that show, mm. like cinematic, like breakdown points. You know what I mean? Like drop the mic type type yeah. um, quotes, and um. The guy in Princess Bride says, life is pain, your highness, and anyone who says differently is selling something. Mm. And I say, yo, man, that's good. That's good. That's good. It's so true. Um, mm. The good life is pain. And anyone who says differently is selling you something or at least trying to sell you something. Um, suffering usually results in greater blessings 
than when living in worldly prosperity. Mm. <laughs> when I look at the scriptures and even at history, I see some of the godliest men and women suffering for Christ's sake, and it saddens me, but then it cheers me up at the same time. You know why? Is because even though they were grieving for a moment, they will be joyful for eternity. So I was sad for what they went through, but I was happy because they went through it and I know what they were I knew where they were going. I knew what was next for them. Um and, and I could say the same in my life. And so I should count my trials as as joy. I should count the things that I go through for Christ particularly. And in this walk that I walk with him, I should count it all as joy um you like should. like like we said last week <laughs> you know and we're gonna get a t-shirt for it smile through the trial <laughs> you know what i mean smile through the trial you have to um right i'd much rather be living my blessed life now than to be living what the world calls my best life now um and that's just looking at all of scripture and then that's particularly looking at luke six was it six or whatever the yeah, beatitudes right. in the gospel of luke and looking at the blessings and the woes and understanding that i should keep eternity at the forefront right of my mind and at the forefront of my heart the forefront of the things that i do in life and my passions my desires keeping christ right at the center and then everything else coming uh uh everything else coming from there that's what he ended with when he <clears throat> talked about the blessings in verse 23. He said, rejoice in that day. And he even said, leap for joy. Amen. Amen. You know? Leap for joy. Like John the Baptist, when he was in the womb of his mother and he <laughs> he was close to Christ and he, he, he noticed the presence of Christ. Leap yeah, for joy. Right. 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 Um, so at this point, we will conclude. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of The Basement, episode 38. Living my blessed life now. <laughs> this has been another episode of The Basement where theology meets the thoughts of life. 